Hello everybody, this is that fish breeder here with another um actually the beginning of my series and this will be upon the culturing of Daphnia. Now um I haven't really attempted the culturing of Daphnia yet, but this this will be a great start. Um I ordered online as I've said before. This is from uh eBay. This is here the package that I came in. Uh all the stuff is already out, but this is what it came in. Nice little package is uh I got this from in Air it's from Arizona, but it's uh I believe it was called uh Air Arizona fairy shrimp and they also you know sell fairy shrimp chops, uh seed shrimp and whatnot. But they uh I ordered Daphne off them. As you can see here it's uh yeah, Arizona fairy shrimp. And uh it came with my package, so they just gave a little envelope. What I ordered was actually not live uh, Daphnia culture as I was planning but I decided I would like to get a crack at water flea eggs now um, the eggs are put in a little um, setup here it's given with uh, a as many of you child lovers would know it's called detritus which is also a basically a substrate um, that's meant for supplying micro microorganisms that can supply the live food for the first, second, and third instar uh, sized, you know, triops, and in this case, water fleas, which are also known as um, Daphnia. Now, I'll be honest, this is kind of embarrassing. I don't honestly know what specific species of Daphnia it is. I was hoping it's Daphnia mo um Magna, I believe is how you pronounce it. It's the largest of the spe of the species, but uh, and one of the easiest. But so far as I can tell, they don't say a darn thing in here. Um, here, as you can see, they just have my PayPal information, and here's the uh, hatching and raising instructions. And I'll be honest, it's uh, kind of helpful, but honestly, it it has some terrible English in here. No offense to um, Arizona fairy shrimp. But th their grammar is kind of terrible. <laughs> um, but I'm not here to criticize them. I I'm here to order, you know, and hatch their product, which are the water flea eggs. Now, these hatch, uh, according to the instructions, is they seem to um, hatch very similarly to um, triops. Uh, as I've said before, you know, triops. Uh, they both hatch, apparently, in the same... Uh, set up ver invernal pools and the eggs can survive desiccation outside of the water and will rehatch in primal conditions. Now, uh, you can't really see the eggs honestly in here. As you can see, the camera can see it, but you can't. I, I can't actually see the actual eggs. I don't know if you guys can. Maybe I just have the worst eyesight in the world, <laughs> but I don't see a thing. So I'm just gonna guess that all of these are just. They just fit the eggs in here as they promised. So you would probably think, oh, fit the eggs doesn't sound like a lot. And I was actually ordering a 1,000 live uh, Daphnia uh, starter culture so that I could get this up and running. But I decided triops would actually take a while to hatch themselves and to get up to a proper size. So I was thinking, hey, you know what? Since I have the time, I might as well start, you know, fresh, start from fresh Daphnia. And 50, like honestly, just 50 alone is a lot of Daphnia. If um, I can get a culture going that has, you know, 50 at a time, I believe I could easily feed my traps, you know, every couple of days, no problem whatsoever. So I'm actually okay with this 50 Daphnia in, in comparison to the 1,000 that I was planning to culture. So um, this is what we're at. And um, today is, I believe, the day that this video is about June 13th, um, 2012, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, an interesting thing I'd like to know about this, sorry about that, was um, they say, let me see here. Oh, here, the water temperature. So, um, keep the water temperature between uh, 50 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So... You know, for triops, they have to have incredibly high standards for temperature range, as far as it's concerned. I believe it was 70, uh, 72 to 82. 
um, is the requirement to get uh, optimal hatching rate. And here it appears the optimal hatching temperature is anywhere between these numbers, which is a great difference. Uh, 50 degrees, that um, that's a bit more like um, San Francisco weather. And I don't know if you guys, where you guys are all from. You guys could be from East Coast, um, Midwest, or even West Coast, or not even from the United States. I don't know where my viewers are at, but San Francisco is a really, um, it's, a, it's a town. Or it's not even a town, it's a huge city. It's uh, along the coast of California. It's not far from here, in about an hour. And their their normal temperature is around 50 degrees. And here right now in summertime, I believe um, room temperature as of currently is about 70. So it's, it's relatively hot. So I believe the temperature should be um, decent. So I don't think for this time around, I am going to be using a... Um, I'm not going to use the lamp as I've done before in my TROP series. I don't know if you can see right there. Um, I still have the setup all ready um, for my TROPs uh, that I'll be starting very soon. Uh, I just like to get the Daphnia series started first and get that out of the way and get it up and running. But yeah, so what my setup is here. So I have two different tanks. Uh, there you go. Two different tanks. Um, both are each going to be started off from this these 50, so I'm going to try to even it out half-half. 25, 25, simple as that. Uh, the difference is, is obviously the, the different size, but that doesn't really matter. I try to even out so that this is about equal. Um, but the difference is that this water is from my tank. And as you can see here, they say to fill the tank. Um, uh, where does it say it? Well, somewhere in here, they say to fill, to use only uh, distilled or um, spring water. There we go. And uh, that that's obviously what traps go with. But I would think that they would be all right with a bit higher nitrate leveled water. So I what I did is I took water from my 10, 10 gallon um, cold water tank and I uh, added it here. It's actually not that cold. I left it out. So now it's about room temperature. So it's, it's good. Um, good level. It's relatively clear, so I hope this is good. There's nothing in there as of yet. Um, I'm actually gonna add this, um, really soon. And so, I left these both out, and this one is, as, as agreed with the instructions, this is spring water. So, that one's just as a safekeeping, in case, uh, for some whatever odd reason, the aquarium water does not work out. Um, and, um... I guess I'll be right back as soon as I get the the solution in. All right. All right, guys, I am back. Uh, I've got you guys some, let's see here. So as you can see, um, I have emptied all of the contents out. There's nothing left. I made sure every last speck of dust was in there. Okay, maybe not literally, but you get the idea. Um, I, I've emptied approximately half to half. Um, it does appear like there's a bit more in here, but I don't think the specifics matter. The point is, is that we got the eggs in here. Um, and, uh, just a thing I'd like to note in comparison to my triops kits, as I've said before. Um, after placing in the water conditioning detritus, uh, it appears that, um, in comparison to triops in both of these cases, the detritus... Um, remains or majority of it remains on the bottom uh, in comparison to Triops kits where it remains mainly on the top it, it's mainly like a tan bark type material like a wood uh, unlike here it appears it's more of a, a silt and dirt combination not so much of a um, wood per se so there is a little bit of like uh, bark here uh, as you can see these are these are bark here um, but it doesn't really seem like it makes much of a difference. I guess either way, this is just what is in the environment of Daphnia. So, um, I put them both in, I mix it a little, um, and as you can see, it's mainly on the bottom of the water, not really on the top. Same with this one. Uh, the reason I put them both here in comparison to somewhere near there is the main reason that there's sunlight and uh, the sunlight I want to take advantage of this lighting, this natural lighting uh, that is, you know, supplied during the summer. And I would like to use it uh, for these traps. And I mean, not traps, I, t I take that back, sorry. Daphnia, Daphnia, there we go, we're talking about Daphnia. And um, 
hopefully that will um will have a good hatch rate now considering how this will not be in such optimal conditions and what i mean by that is that i'm not using the best of temperatures uh i am in 70 78 something 75 degree fahrenheit i'm in room temperature right now so i'm not using so much of a 82 degree as recommended for traps so they may take a bit longer to hatch out. I'm going to give it a good 48 hours to start seeing the first signs of life. Uh, so guys, I'm sorry, but you might not get another video for a couple days or until I can easily or visibly see um, Daphnia hatching out and movement. Um, so uh, we're just going to have to wait on this. They, they say that this could take anywhere from... Uh, Let's see, they start hatching on 48 hours, as I've said before, but sometimes it takes up to five days, uh, and they will keep hatching over a week. And, um, sorry, and I've heard on many, uh, Daphnia sites that it does take approximately a week or two to start seeing, uh, the majority of the, of your Daphnia hatching out. So, uh, please guys give me some, uh, give some patience for this one. Uh, this may take a bit longer than my traps series and um that's pretty much it as far as you guys can see here as you can see this is just the setup there's nothing fancy actually this is the, one of the most simple um experiments i have done of yet um but we will see uh, hopefully some daphnia hatching that would be fantastic i would like to get a couple cultures started and the plan is is once i've got these started i will indeed be transferring these over to that five gallon it is of no use right now um, I've cleaned it out. I've actually cleaned it incredibly well. I've washed it um, with tap water and I've bleached it in approximately a uh, one to four uh, water to um, bleach ratio. So it should be incredibly clean. And then after I left it to sit for a while, I cleaned that out, rinsed it incredibly well, and I've left it out in the California sun for about uh, a good three days so if anything the bleach and any bad you know bad whatever pathogens are gone so this should be set for daphnia use as of late and um last thing before this video ends i'd like to show you guys something that i'm doing also for this daphnia culture that should hopefully um help with the culturing process so uh, i'll be right back guys all right guys i am back um here we go we have um as you can see it's just a normal two liter bottle uh out in my backyard uh we just um we just went outside basically and as you can see it's really bright out here this is you know still california summer weather um peak conditions for algae and as you can see here i am trying to do um, the culturing of green water. I don't know if any of you are familiar with what green water it is. Uh, what it is, it is basically a phytoplankton, uh, fresh water to be exact, and it is used in feeding all types of um, critters that you know consume algae. And in specific, this is free, free roaming, um, single unicellular type algae so it's not going to be that type of algae which clings to the wall of your aquariums this is more of an algae that um consists in the free sitting water so the primary conditions um i'm trying to display here is first heavy sunlight and this is obviously of major importance because it is an algae it does consume or it does uh require sunlight for photosynth uh, photosynthesis and um as you can see here, the water I gotten from my tank it is uh, a mixture between um, both my tanks, my turtle tank, and which houses Pierre at the moment, and um, my 10 gallon tank. And I've combined these two, and they're both very high in nitrates because, um, in specific, my tank, uh, my turtle tank, he kind of uh, the filter kind of broke on him, so. Things have been getting kind of nasty in there, but I do know that the nitrate levels have been rising and that is preferred conditions for an algae because nitrates are required for proper growth. And um, as you can see here at the top, this is um, rich in nitrates. This is actually potting soil. And obviously algae is a type of plant, so what better to use than plant food for 
these plants. So uh, what I did is I gave it a good shaking. Right now they're all at the top, but I gave it a very good shaking. Uh, it should have high amount of oxygen in there at the moment. I'll probably give it a good shaking daily. And um, hopefully this, you know, grows us some um, single uh, unicellular algae. Um, hopefully, uh, I'm told it'll take a while, quite a few days to be exact, maybe a week or two. But um, yeah, hopefully uh, my Daphne culture will be up and running. I'll probably be feeding it yeast until this, if this green water culture even gets started. Um, once it does, I will use this um, green water and hopefully that will uh, definitely improve the diet of my Daphnia and in turn my fish and traps. So um, that's about it guys for this beginning of the series. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed um, and look out for more videos. All right, leave a like, comment, any questions you guys have, you guys know I answer them. All right, see you guys.